Welcome back students to Mr. Latham's AP Macroeconomics. Today we're going to talk about the MPC or the marginal propensity to consume and the multiplier. Okay, so we're continuing our discussion on marginal propensity to consume, consumption and spending, and we're converting it into the multiplier. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to calculate the simple spending multiplier. Okay, the simple spending multiplier is the multiplier equals 1 divided by the marginal propensity to save. Okay, 1 over the MPS. So, and we're going to go through this in a minute, and you're going to see how that cal that's calculated. But the spending, the multiplier is 1 over the marginal propensity to save. And we get, remember, we get marginal propensity to save by taking 1 and subtracting the marginal propensity to consume. So if the marginal propensity to consume is 75% or 0.75, then MPS will be 0.25. Okay, secondly, provide an intuitive explanation of the multiplier effect. Well, think about this, okay? I bring money into your town, and let's say I spend $1,000 at a business. Okay, what's that business going to do with that $1,000? Well, my guess is they're going to pay employees and buy stuff and all. They're going to spend a lot of that $1,000. Now, some of it they're going to save, but some of it they're going to spend. And let's assume some of the money they spend they pay to their employees. Well, what's, what are the employees going to do with the money they get? Well, they're going to do the same thing. So now, first, I spent my $1,000. The business spent part of that $1,000 on various things, including their employees. The employees take the money they get, and they spend it again. Do you see what's happening here? That the first thing, we've got a dollar that gets spent, then $0.75, cents, and then 75% of that, and so on. In other words, that money keeps getting spent over and over, although each person shaves off some for savings and all of that. So that's the intuitive explanation of the multiplier that people spending money, it keeps adding in. Now under normal conditions, this is already factored into spending, okay? Because all this money's in here. Unless we have something referred to as an autonomous investment. Well, what's an autonomous investment? Well, there's two primary ways we can get autonomous investment that'll be used in the AP exam. One of them is the government spends more. Government spending increases, right? Let's just say right now our government is spending 2.5 billion a year. It's probably way more than that. It's probably closer to 3.5 billion. But let's say they're spending 2.5 billion a year and they're like, wow, the economy is terrible. We need to spend 2.8 billion a year. Well, what do you think the autonomous investment part of that is? Well, if you're thinking, well, we spent 0.3 billion or 300 million dollars more, actually that should be trillion for our government, but let's just use billions here. So it's 0.3 billion more. Well, you're right. That's the autonomous investment. In other words, this the difference here, this 0.3 billion hasn't been spent before, so it hasn't gotten multiplied and respent, and respent, and respent. Well, it, this 0.3, now the 2.5, that's already built in, but that extra 0.3 billion is autonomous investment. The second way is coming out of a recession. Who spins, spins, spins? Right? We talked about this, and we talked about this previously. Or your teachers talked about this previously. Well, it's business investment, right? Coming out of a recession, businesses are going to invest more than normal. Their, their investment will spike because during the recession, because those, those purchases are postponable, they postponed building a factory, updating their equipment or anything like that. And now they can do the same thing. You could use the exact same example before they were investing $2.5 billion. Now they're investing $2.8 billion. This $0.3 billion is going to be added over and above what the economy normally has. So that's autonomous investment. Either increased or you could say decreased government spending would, would cause a negative multiplier, but we're not going to worry too much about that. And same thing, a massive increase in investment could also cause impact on the multiplier and we'll get to that impact specifically on aggregate demand and all of that in the next few weeks the other thing we want to talk about the actual multiplier may differ 
from the theoretical multiplier. And we'll get to that in a little bit and then calculate the tax multiplier. So in the meantime, I'm going to skip ahead here and I'm going to talk about actually this calculation of the multiplier. Okay. Now, number one here, the, and you recall this from the previous video, it's the exact same numbers. In fact, I have a little error right there. That's supposed to be one. That's the same error even. Okay. The multi what's a multiplier for the additional spending of disposable income is at 260. Here's 260. Here's our MPC. But I told you the multiplier is M equals 1 divided by the marginal propensity to save. So that's 1 over 0.25. So 1 over 0.25 equals 4. So if they spend, if the government spends additional money, you're going to be able to take whatever the government spent, multiply that by 4, and that will increase GDP. Well, specifically, let's, let's, cover, let's co make a specific example of that. How much would the government have to spend to move the equilibrium level, move to the equilibrium level of income if GDP was 240. In other words, GDP is right here at 240. Are we in equilibrium? No, we're not. Okay. Where's equilibrium? Well, it's where the average propensity to consume is one, where GDP and consumption are equal. So how much more GDP do we need? Well, if we're at 240 and we need to be at 260, we need 20. Right? We need a total of 20. So you'd say, well, the government needs to spend 20. No, they don't. Why not? Because the government benefits from the multiplier. If the government spends a certain amount, okay, and we'll say that amount is X, okay, little algebra in here, then what's that number going to be multiplied? Well, it's going to be multiplied by the multiplier, which we already said was 4. So X times 4 equals 20. Well, the government has to spend 5, right? 5 times 4 equals 20. So our answer is $5 billion, right? We were talking about billions, so $5 billion or $5 million or whatever, whatever amount we're actually talking about. Okay, now, the last question is, if the government spends $5 and funds the spending with a tax increase instead of a... Instead of autonomous investment, and actually spending with a tax, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Let me start over. Okay, if the government spends $5 and funds the spending with a tax increase of $5, what's the impact on disposable income? First, let me go back and talk about these last two things, okay? First, discuss why the actual multiplier may differ from theoretical examples. Okay, in our case, let's say that for the U.S., the actual multiplier, or the, the theoretical multiplier is about 5. Well, our actual multiplier is only about 2. Well, wait a second. If it's supposed to be 5, why is it only 2? Well, there's two big things that are talked about within on the AP exam, and those two things are taxes and imports. And if you think about it, those two things make a lot of sense. If I get additional money, what's going to happen when I go to the store to buy something? I'm going to pay sales tax. Plus, there's on gasoline, there's excise tax. In fact, there's all kinds of taxes that can take away part of my ability to spend. I get an extra ten dollars. Well, I may not be able to spend the, or I may not be able to get ten dollars worth of consumption out of that ten dollars because of taxes. The other thing is, if I buy clothing, where does virtually all of the clothing in the, clothing in the United States come from? Well, it comes from overseas. It comes from it's imported. Well, that's also not going to help our GDP. We pay that money for imports. It goes to another country. That isn't subject to the multiplier. So the two primary reasons that actual the actual multiplier is going to be less than the calculated multiplier of taxes and imports. Now, you only need to worry about that if that specific thing is asked. Normally, you just calculate the multiplier and move on. The second thing we need to do here is calculate the tax multiplier. Okay, so we've already calculated the multiplier. It was 1 over MPS. 
Okay, in our case, we, we just did it. It was 1 over 0.25, so we calculated a multiplier of 4. The tax multiplier, and you'll see in your book there's a calculation, and you can do that calculation, but something that seems even easier is the tax multiplier is always 1 less than the multiplier. So we just calculated M as 4, which means the tax multiplier, so we're going to go M tax is 3, right? 1 less than 4 is 3. And taxes, as opposed to spending, taxes take away our money, so we make it negative. Okay? So it's 1 less and it's negative. No matter what you calculate as the multiplier, if you calculate the multiplier as 5, the tax multiplier is negative 4. If you calculate the, the multiplier as 3, the tax multiplier is negative 2. And in fact, if you calculate the multiplier as 2, then the tax multiplier is going to be negative 1. Okay? So that it's that simple. The tax multiplier 1 less, and because taxes take away money, it's negative. Now we're ready to move on to this calculation right here. If the government spends $5 and funds the spending with a tax increase of $5, well, you think about that, right? So the government is spending 5 and they're collecting 5 so the net effect on the government is 0 But disposable income, okay? Consumption plus IG plus G plus X minus M equals aggregate demand or GDP. Same things, right? We'll talk about that in a little bit very soon. Okay, well, the $5, this $5 right here, okay, the government spends the $5. Where does that go? Well, that goes right here. Okay, the government takes $5 from us. Where does that come from? Well, do you see taxes on here anyway? anywhere C I G G X and M the answer is no you don't okay so what's going to happen is disposable income is going to go up five because the government's going to spend the five and the tax is going to come out of savings another way to look at that is in our case remember what M was to equal to four okay four times five is twenty dollars well if M is four then M tax, the tax multiplier, is negative 3. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And bingo, there's 20 minus 15. 20 minus 15 is 5. Okay? What this tells you, and they love asking this on the AP exam, is if the government spends $5 and funds it with a tax increase of $5, you're going to say, what's the impact on the income? Well, it's going to be zero. Wrong. It's going to be whatever the government spending is. Okay? So if they said they spend 20, then it's going to be 20. And it doesn't matter how big the multiplier is. The multiplier could be 10. The multiplier could be 3. Either way, the impact's going to be whatever the amount the government spends. Okay, so it's spending financed by a tax increase. Okay, and it's just going to be that same amount. You just have to learn that. Okay, and I think we're get, about wrapped it up here. Yes, we have. So there it is, another edition of Mr. Latham's AP Macroeconomics. See you next time, and we're out.